Hello, my name is Mort Kern. We're here at the University of California at Irvine in the cardiac cath lab. And uh, I'm going to uh, take you through a three-part discussion of radiation and radiation safety in the cath lab. This will be uh, an introduction to the, uh, the physics and uh, application of x-rays that we use in the cath lab to visualize angiograms and uh, other structures during our procedures. So let's start right in. We're going to start here with the x-ray. So common x-ray image is obtained by injecting x-ray contrast material into the artery, seeing the luminogram of the vessel. And this image is generated through the application of x-rays originating under the table and transmitting up through the patient, reflecting off the iodine molecules and creating this image. All of this imaging requires the generation of x-rays through photons and this requires the uh, energy into the system in electrical volts. And we're going to see how the x-ray is generated. We're going to learn about the components of the x-ray generator. We're going to learn about the names given to the x-ray particles that form these images. First of all, let's look at and see how x-rays are generated. So a high voltage electrical current is put out of an x-ray generator. And this is all the different parts of the x-ray generator here on the left side. There's a transformer, an auto transformer, a high voltage transformer, and kilovoltages of electricity are generated, milliampers of power are generated, and this electrical current is transmitted to the uh, x-ray tube, which is here under the x-ray C-arm. We'll talk about this again in more detail. This is the x-ray tube. The x-rays are generated here. They travel upward to the image intensifier. Again, we'll go over this piece of equipment in detail. Let's just return a moment to the x-ray generator. The x-ray generator is pretty much automatically controlled, setting the kilovoltage and milliampers of energy to produce an image. So there's a feedback system between the image generation and the power generation. Now this electrical current, a very high voltage, is transmitted through these big cables, these big cables into the x-ray tube, which is a spinning filament of tungsten called the anode. The electricity hits the anode. It activates the molecules in the tungsten filament and produces X radiation. The electrical side is called the cathode. The tungsten filament rotating head is called the anode. And then there's a number of different uh, components which make this high speed rotational anode uh, function well. There's a huge amount of heat generated by the transmission of electricity activating these electrodes. And that heat is taken out by these, this oil bath that surrounds this glass tube. Most of the energy used to generate x-rays, almost more than 90%, is taken out as heat. And only 3% of that energy remains to generate these x-rays. And there's a lot of different components that go into making this function uh, very efficiently, very accurately, and very safely.